Hey, welcome to Android Dialogues, where we have bite-sized conversations with people in the Android community. I'm Huynh Duet Dao, and I'm speaking with... Yu Mols. Uh, where are you based, and how did you get started in Android? Uh, so I'm Belgian, but I currently work in Netherlands for a small company called Philips. Uh, it's actually a bit of a funny story, because I never studied computer science. Oh, really? No, I studied uh, electrical engineering, really analog chip designs. But by the time I had finished my studies, I already knew I didn't want to work. <laughs> I don't regret studying it, but it's just, it's a bit too abstract. And yeah. you cannot explain it to someone anymore. Mm -hmm. So then I started working at Philips. And the first day they told me like, yeah, what do you want to do? Mm -hmm. Hardware or software? Mm -hmm. And then I was like, uh... And then they said, yeah, we need someone looking into apps, mobile apps, actually. Mm -hmm. And because I already had done some Java in my spare time, mm -hmm. then I started working on mobile apps. Um, my first prototype I actually made was... Um, uh, Prototypery encoded data into an audio signal. Mm -hmm. So it is directly full heads on. Mm -hmm. And then it sort of went from there naturally. So I started trying to learn more things and professionalize. Mm -hmm. And then one thing led to another. And here we are now, four and a half years later. So what I actually do is, so I'm officially the app system engineer of the Philips Hue system. Um, or one of the app system engineers. What that basically means it's um, that I all of the new features that we want to include in our system mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna do the pre-development of those and help with making the specifications like how should this feature look like oh, interesting. and also our system is rather complex mm -hmm. and there's a lot of like bad weather scenarios when you want to control lights so to cover all of those bad weather scenarios, um, we need to do a lot of yeah prototyping to see mm -hmm. what they are and also see like, does the user still understand this? And that's basically what I do. Mm -hmm. And then I also make sure that our system is also tailored towards our apps. Right, so to right. make it convenient to use our system as an app developer. In general, like what you've been working on is, and we were discussing this a little bit earlier, is connected products. Yeah, yeah Can, can you kind of explain what a connected product is? So basically a connected product is whenever you connect like a smartphone to a product. So mm -hmm. in its simplest form, it would be some Bluetooth device, for instance, like a Bluetooth coffee machine mm -hmm. and you connect your phone to it. And then you have like two devices who are connected. Mm -hmm. But you can make that significantly more complicated. If you now make a Wi-Fi based product, mm -hmm. then you already have three actors. So you have also your router, which mm -hmm. is going to play oh, into wow. the game. Mm -hmm. And then you can make it even more complicated because you could also <laughs> enable remote control. So you need to have a backend. So then you have four actors. Oh, wow. And if you then look at what the U is doing, mm -hmm. we also have a bridge, mm -hmm. which then translates, yeah, basically HTTP traffic into Zigbee traffic. Wow. So we have five entry points. Wow. Uh, that's a lot of connectivity. Yeah. And that really, really generates quite some bad weather scenarios and quite some complexity. And my job is basically to try and minimize that. Okay, so for anyone who's actually heard of maybe the term uh, Internet of Things, how does connect, how do connected products relate to Internet of Things? So the Internet of Things basically means that multiple products are talking to each other right. via the Internet. Mm -hmm. So a connected product does not necessarily have to be an Internet of Things product because you mm -hmm. could have like a Bluetooth device, which mm -hmm. is still a connected product, but which isn't an right. Internet of Things device. Right, right. But the Internet of Things, or at least what it means to me, is mm -hmm. that you connect your device mm -hmm. to the internet and that suddenly opens up a whole range of new possibilities mm -hmm. because it's not just about control anymore it's mostly about data gathering oh okay yeah i see like yeah. for instance if you would make um yeah another product i've worked on like an air purifier mm -hmm. then the app would allow you to control the air purifier mm -hmm. which is cool that you can do that but the real mm -hmm. benefit is that you can log into some web service and mm -hmm. there you can see like trends of how good your air quality was over mm -hmm. the past couple of weeks and that you can really follow that up so mm -hmm. the data part mm -hmm. is actually the part that most people forget but that's where the real value is oh that makes a lot of sense and being able to tap into that information to kind of tailor i guess based on a person's habits yeah. or their their situation Indeed. oh i never thought about it that way yeah. you need to have the data because from the data you can learn right and then the products can also you can combine them and suddenly you can do really smart things Kind of coming back though to connected products because it sounds like what kind of like one of your specialties yeah. um, in terms yeah. of Android development. Um, as you were mentioning before, you know, it, it seems like it can get kind of almost exponentially complicated as you add more kind of like devices into like the chain of of who's talking to whom. Yeah. Um, other than like this, I, other than like the fact that you might have multiple actors in the system, what are the mo most kind of difficult parts of working with connected products? So 
The biggest challenge as an app developer is that whenever something goes wrong <laughs> with a connected product, whether you're to blame or not, mm -hmm. people are gonna rate your app. Right, yes. So the stability <laughs> is, I guess, the main the main problem. No, absolutely, yeah. yeah. And mm -hmm. then next to stability, it's gonna be speed. Mm -hmm. So imagine if you do a call start of an application, and if you then want to connect to a certain product, that's actually, you need to find what the product is, and there's quite a lot of things you need to do, mm -hmm. and users don't want to wait for 10 seconds before something would appear Absolutely, online. Absolutely, yeah. So to optimize that cold start flow to make sure that you know like, is my Wi-Fi device, is it gonna appear locally on my network mm -hmm. or should I connect via the remote or should I do that? To mm -hmm. really get that optimized, mm -hmm. that's one of the main challenges, I guess. Yeah, it does sound, I mean, that's all part of the user experience basically. And Yeah, it's all of the user experience. Mm -hmm. When you're talking connected products, it's also often about assuming success and making things appear fast. <laughs> no, that's, yeah, yeah. So it, it sounds really dumb, but imagine if I would turn on my lights mm -hmm. and if I would toggle the switch, I'm on a remote connection, so mm -hmm. it could take one or three seconds. Mm -hmm. That's quite of a normal behavior. Mm -hmm. If you would show a blocking spinner in the UI and mm -hmm. the user would need to wait for like three seconds for that spinner to go away, right. that would be awful, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's not a very extreme example, but it can also be a lot more subtle. It's always interesting. It feels like whenever hardware um, becomes part of the, I guess, the system or the problem, the solutions become a little less precise. Um, yeah, that's true for sure. And I think, yeah, one good advice with that is, I guess, just testing with users and mm -hmm. also testing Absolutely. it yourself. I'm yeah. a big fan of eating your own dog food, using yes. your own system. Dog fooding, yes. And if you find something to be annoying, well, then probably <laughs> yeah, we everybody probably is going to well. find it to be annoying. <laughs> Absolutely. So that's like a good stake in the ground to know whether or not you should change something. Okay, so definitely dog food. So kind of a lot of that user experience part seems in, in at least making, giving the user the perception that the system is fast. But what are like more concrete things that you can do to make your connect, connected yeah. product system faster? <laughs> So I think um, the main challenge is if you do a cold start of the app. Right. Because once you do a cold start of the app, mm -hmm. you really don't know what's going on at all. Mm -hmm. So one of the simple things you can do there is you should remember on which network you've last seen mm -hmm. your device. Mm -hmm. So imagine if you're cold starting your app and mm -hmm. you're on Wi-Fi network A, mm -hmm. then you just look up in a database like which devices were connected to this network before, mm -hmm. and then you just assume they're gonna be connected to that network. Mm -hmm. Now, that assumption might be wrong because some other app might have moved the device right. to another network while mm -hmm. you were not away. Mm -hmm. But the likelihood of that assumption being right is mm -hmm. bigger than it being wrong. Mm -hmm. So then immediately you can show like, I'm connected, whereas you're not really connected yet. Mm -hmm. And then you obviously need to have a timeout where you auto-correct the things yourself. Mm -hmm. So I guess that's one of the biggest things. Mm -hmm. um, the second biggest tip I have is you should prefer local connections at all time. Mm. Because, oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah, because the local communication over a Wi-Fi network, it's always gonna be faster, right. mm -hmm. but it's also gonna be cheaper because the more commands you send to your servers, the more load your servers are gonna have. So the more expensive it's gonna be to maintain your servers. Mm -hmm. So optimizing that not only has like a user benefit of mm -hmm. better speed, but mm -hmm. also a cost benefit. So the flow that we typically have is you first try to connect locally. If that's not possible, then you fall back to remote. Mm -hmm. And if that's not possible, then you say disconnected. What kind of architecture is like, so everyone loves talking about architecture in the Android community. Um, can you give us kind of an example of good architectures when you're working with connected products? Yeah, so I think the best way to get started is just to start simple. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people often try to think about all of the cases at once, but mm -hmm. mostly, it's just gonna be better if you just start building something and mm -hmm. you start building something really simple, mm -hmm. which just does one request at a time. Mm -hmm. Don't do requests in parallel because mm -hmm. they might overload your product. Usually mm -hmm. usually the, the limitating factor is gonna be on the product side because they can only handle so many incoming connections. Mm -hmm. um, so start simple, just send requests one by one and queue them. And uh, actually a really good tip there is Many of the products are based, I guess, or a lot of communication is based on the JSON protocol. Oh, yeah. And something really simple you can do is if you create a hash map and mm -hmm. you just put your key values in the hash map, mm -hmm. and instead of when you press a button always creating a new request, mm -hmm. you just fill in that hash map mm -hmm. until you have time again to send a new request. Mm -hmm. Then you can automatically combine multiple requests in one go because then you just take all the values from the hash map, you create a JSON, and suddenly you're posting a lot of stuff mm -hmm. instead of having to do like multiple requests. 
So if you would then do like on off on off on off on off, oh, okay. that would automatically correct itself. Right, right. Or if I would do on off set color, change brightness, blah blah blah. Mm -hmm. If your architecture is busy, mm -hmm. then when the time it gets back online and has time to do something, mm -hmm. then it would suddenly do all of those things in one go. Right. So consolidating everything and yeah, just making it more concise. Everything. Oh, yeah. that's really interesting. Uh, cool. If someone's interested in in connected products, what's a good place for them to get started? I guess. Yeah, I think. Many of the popular connected products already have some kind of SDK where you could just start and developing something, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I can make a bit of promotion maybe, but Philips Hue <laughs> as an SDK which you can just use and mm -hmm. then you can start building apps for Philips Hue. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a really interesting thing because many other products also have it. Mm -hmm. uh, and otherwise I would say like, buy like a mini PC, buy a Raspberry Pi, buy an Arduino mm -hmm. and add a Wi-Fi shield to it. And yeah, you can just find a lot of samples on the internet mm -hmm. and then you can just Keep on going, build something, and learn from there. It's by building that you learn. Right, right. And so, make mistakes and fix them. And make mistakes and fix them. Yeah. <laughs> that's hardware mistakes. No, um, no I, I think that's really great. And I think it's something that um, is one of the fantastic things about working at Android is that you can get into hardware. You can get into other kind of like systems yep. and really do cool things um, all on your own and at home. Do you, is there any other kind of like, what other interesting products you've been working on in terms of like connectedness? So uh, I've built a wireless speaker mm -hmm. so that you were streaming uh, music oh, cool. to the speaker. Yeah, yeah. it's quite cool because you could stream music locally from the phone or from an, any server in your house mm -hmm. using the DLNA protocol. So mm -hmm. that's oh, yeah. Kind of nice, I guess. Uh, I've built a connected air purifier, which might seem like a crazy product, but for other markets like China, oh, yeah, yeah. air pollution <laughs> is a bigger problem than it is in other countries. Mm -hmm. And for them, it's really the fact that you can see that, okay, my kids are at home and mm -hmm. the air is clean. Mm -hmm. So that's for parents a very comforting feeling. Yeah, no. Yeah. Um, then I built a yeah, Bluetooth LE coffee machine. And then now I'm finally working on you. That's which awesome. is like a connected product of connected product, <laughs> which makes it extra challenging. So I'm uh, having a lot of fun. Awesome. Thank you so much for uh, chatting with us. Um, yeah. If people wanted to find you on the internet, where can they do that? So uh, I'm at Malsoon on Twitter. And I also write my own blog at jerumals.com slash blog. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. And thank you um, everyone for watching and we'll see you next time. Okay. Bye. Bye. -bye.